Chemical bonds are fundamental to the structure and function of many types of molecules, such as proteins, carbohydrates, lipids, nucleic acids, gases, salts, and water. These molecules are composed of atoms that are held together by three different types of bonds. Covalent bonds, ionic bonds, and hydrogen bonds. An atom consists of a nucleus surrounded by charged particles called electrons. The electrons exist in various layers surrounding the nucleus called orbitals. Atoms are most stable when their outermost orbital is filled. Usually, the outermost orbital contains eight electrons. If an atom's outermost orbital is not filled, electrons will move to fill this shell. The activity of electrons between adjacent atoms is the basis of chemical bonds. Ionic bonds are formed when electrons are transferred from one atom to another. For example, one electron can move from the sodium atom to the chlorine atom. After the electron is transferred, each original atom has changed its charge and is now called an ion. The sodium ion, having lost an electron, now has a positive one charge. The chloride ion, having gained an electron, now has a negative one charge. The transfer of electrons that formed the sodium and chloride ions gives them opposite charges. The attraction between the opposite charges of the sodium and chloride ions is called an ionic bond. Table salt, sodium chloride, is an example of an ionic compound formed by the attraction between sodium and chloride ions. Ionic bonds are weak and will break easily in water. This is why salts dissolve in water. Since living systems are filled with watery solutions, the weak ionic bonds are uncommon in the body. Ions are extremely important for maintaining homeostasis. The charges on ions make them very useful. For example, Movement of sodium ions through a nerve cell membrane enables nerve impulses to be generated. The acidity of body fluids is regulated in part by the bonding of hydrogen ions with different types of negatively charged ions. Bone gets its hardness and strength from the reaction of calcium, phosphate, and carbonate ions. Covalent bonds are created when two atoms share electrons in the outermost orbital. The oxygen molecule is formed by the sharing of electrons between two oxygen atoms. Both of the original oxygen atoms share the electrons. Covalent bonds are strong bonds. Almost all the compounds in cells are held together by covalent bonds. These include water, oxygen and carbon dioxide gases, lipids, carbohydrates, proteins, nucleic acids, and ATP. When electrons are shared within a molecule, they are not always uniformly distributed. A water molecule has eight outer electrons contributed by its hydrogen and oxygen atoms. The electrons are quite strongly attracted by the oxygen part of the molecule. This results in the oxygen end of the molecule having a slight negative charge while the hydrogens have a slight positive charge. 
These partial charges are indicated by the Greek letter delta. The partial charges on these water molecules will have an effect on how these molecules line up with one another in solution. The hydrogen end of one molecule will be attracted to the oxygen end of an adjacent water molecule. The weak attractive forces that determine the orientation of these molecules are called hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonds are susceptible to breakage when there are changes in temperature or hydrogen ion concentration. Hydrogen bonds are found in other covalent compounds. Part of the structure of a protein molecule is maintained by hydrogen bonds between adjacent sections of that molecule. The double helix of DNA is also stabilized by hydrogen bonds. Water is very important for transporting most of the molecules in the body. In order to understand how water acts as a solvent, we need to look at the structure of a water molecule. In water, the electrons spend more time near the oxygen atom, giving it a partial negative charge. The hydrogen ends have a partial positive charge. A molecule that has different partial charges is known as a polar molecule. The polar regions of water are attracted to electrical charges in other molecules, such as ions. Polar covalent molecules like carbohydrates, proteins, nucleic acids, and ATP are easily dissolved. The electrons of nonpolar covalent compounds are uniformly distributed. Compounds such as lipids are made up mostly of carbon and hydrogen. These are considered nonpolar. Nonpolar lipids have no charge. Lipids are not attracted to water and do not dissolve in it. If lipids are placed in water, they will rise to the top, remaining separate from the water. The insolubility of lipids in water makes them very important in the structure of the cell membrane. They will not be dissolved by the watery solutions inside and outside the membrane. Phospholipids have nonpolar tails made up of fatty acids. The head of the molecule is made up of a polar or charged phosphate group. Because the head is polar, it mixes with water. It is hydrophilic or water loving. The nonpolar lipid end moves away from the water. It is hydrophobic or water hating. A bilayer of phospholipids with their tails entwined forms a waterproof barrier for the cell membrane. The regulation of the acidity of a solution is very important to maintaining homeostasis. Acidity is based on the number of hydrogen ions in a solution. When an acid dissociates in water, it breaks into a hydrogen ion and a negatively charged ion. As such, an acid is also known as a proton donor. Dissociation of a base in water produces a hydroxide ion and a positive ion.
hydroxide ions and hydrogen ions react to form water, removing hydrogen ions from the solution. This is why bases are called proton acceptors. The pH scale expresses the concentration of hydrogen ions in solution. This scale ranges from 0 to 14. A pH value of 7 is neutral. Any value lower than 7 is acidic, and any value greater than 7 is basic or alkaline. Most body fluids have a pH value near neutral. A strong acid completely dissociates in water. There is little attraction between hydrogen and chloride ions. Strong acids are not commonly found in the body. Gastric juice, however, contains hydrochloric acid, a strong acid. It is important for the digestion of proteins. Hydrochloric acid also kills bacteria ingested with food by destroying proteins required for their existence. Carbonic acid is a weak acid. It is formed when carbon dioxide is released into water. It is important in regulating blood pH. A weak acid partially dissociates in water because there is a strong attraction between the hydrogen ion and the bicarbonate ion. Recall that too many hydrogen ions will break down the structure of proteins by breaking hydrogen bonds. The body uses buffer systems to react with excess hydrogen ions. This protects the proteins from breaking down. Buffers consist of weak acids and anions from the salts of those weak acids. This solution contains hydrogen ions and buffers, a weak acid and anions from the salt of that weak acid. If hydrogen ions are added to the solution, the anion reacts with a hydrogen ion. This returns the concentration of hydrogen ions to its original value. Likewise, if hydrogen ions are lost from the solution, the carbonic acid dissociates, releasing a hydrogen ion and restoring the hydrogen ion concentration. Buffer systems protect proteins by counteracting changes in pH. Enzymes are special types of proteins that catalyze reactions. Some enzymes consist of two parts, the protein part, called the apoenzyme, and a non-protein part, called the cofactor. The cofactor can be a metal ion or another organic molecule, called a coenzyme. Vitamins are the raw material for many coenzymes. A cofactor usually has an effect on the final shape of the whole enzyme, affecting its ability to catalyze its reaction. An enzyme acts upon another molecule, which is called its substrate. The active site is the region of the enzyme that acts upon the substrate. Enzymes have three important properties. First, they are quite specific, which means they will only catalyze one or two reactions. The specificity of enzymes comes from the close correspondence in shape between the substrate and the active site. Second, enzymes are also very efficient. They can catalyze reactions at a rate more than 10 million times faster than would occur without enzymes. A single enzyme molecule can process more than 10,000 substrate molecules in one second. The third important property of enzymes is that they can be controlled in several ways. Activity can be affected by the genes, which determine the concentration and rate of synthesis of all proteins. Enzymes can be inhibited or enhanced by substances within the cell. The cofactor 
is often involved in this process. In this example, the active site is inaccessible due to the presence of the inhibitor. Many enzymes exist in inactive forms and are turned on by their chemical surroundings. For example, digestive enzymes in the stomach are inactive until they contact the hydrogen ions there. The ions break some of the bonds in the enzyme and part of it falls off, exposing the active site. The first step in the action of an enzyme is that the substrate makes contact with the active site of the enzyme. In order to carry out the reaction, the shape of the enzyme is changed and the reaction causes the substrate to change. This could be a rearrangement of its atoms, a decomposition, or a synthesis of two substrates. The enzyme is not altered in this process, except for the change in its shape. ATP, or adenosine triphosphate, is a molecule that stores energy that can be used by the cell. The usable energy is stored in the bond holding the third phosphate. This bond is formed during the processes of cellular respiration. The release of energy from ATP is controlled by enzymes called ATPases. ATPases use the energy from the breakdown of ATP in very specific ways. ATPase in the cell membrane uses the energy from ATP to move ions against their concentration gradients. This membrane protein transports sodium out of the cell and potassium into the cell. As such, it is called a sodium-potassium pump. Because this pump also acts as an enzyme to hydrolyze ATP, it is also called ATPase. Another use of the energy in ATP is in the contraction of muscle. Proteins in the muscle pull past one another. The energy for their movement comes from ATP. As they move past one another, the muscle shortens. Myosin is the protein that splits ATP. It is also responsible for the pulling. It is therefore called myosin ATPase. A third use of ATP is in the synthesis of molecules. In this example, glycogen is synthesized from glucose by a series of enzymes. The properties of enzymes make them very important for effective functioning of many cellular processes. Chemical reactions involve making and breaking bonds in order to form new molecules. The bonds that hold together the hydrogen and oxygen molecules are a form of potential energy. When these bonds are broken, energy is released. Some of this energy is used to make new bonds. This chemical reaction formed two water molecules, the products, from hydrogen and oxygen molecules, the reactants. The water molecule is formed by a covalent bond, the sharing of valence electrons from the reactant's outermost orbitals. If collisions between the hydrogen and oxygen molecules are forceful enough, the valence electrons will be disrupted and a new bond will form. Additional energy, called the activation energy, must be absorbed by the reactants in order to break their bonds and start a chemical reaction. Reactants, like hydrogen and oxygen, have their own kinetic energy, the energy that keeps them in motion. When the reactants absorb more energy from their surroundings, the activation energy needed to break bonds is supplied. Energy is released as the products form. Two factors increase the energy available for activation. Increasing the temperature of a solution 
gives the reactants more kinetic energy, increasing the force of collision, making it easier to disrupt the valence electrons. Increasing the concentration of the reactants increases the chance that a collision will occur. In a living cell, normal temperatures and pressure from concentrated reactants are too low to provide the activation energy needed to break strong covalent bonds. Increases in temperatures or pressure are not consistent with cellular homeostasis and can lead to cell damage or death. As a result, changes in these factors within a cell are small and reaction rates are only slightly accelerated. Enzymes are proteins that solve reaction rate problems in living systems by reducing the activation energy needed for chemical reactions. Enzymes are catalysts that speed up a chemical reaction. Enzymes are large proteins with specific shapes. The molecule that the enzyme acts upon is called the substrate. The active site is the part of the enzyme that works on the substrate. The active site has a specific shape for its substrate. The products are the results of the enzymatic activity. In this example, the substrate is the disaccharide sucrose. The enzymatic activity breaks the bonds in the sucrose. And the monosaccharides, glucose and fructose, are the products. A synthesis reaction occurs when two or more atoms or molecules join together to form a larger molecule. For example, two amino acids will join to form a dipeptide. This is called a dehydration synthesis because water is removed from the reactants in this reaction. A large molecule breaks down into two or more smaller molecules in a decomposition reaction. For example, a dipeptide can be broken down into two amino acids. In this case, water is used to break the bond. This kind of decomposition is called hydrolysis. An exchange reaction is a combination of synthesis and decomposition. Two molecules are decomposed and two new molecules are synthesized. The components of the reactants recombine to form the products. Most reactions in the cell are exchange reactions, even though they may appear to be decomposition or synthesis reactions. For example, the synthesis of a dipeptide from two amino acids is really an exchange reaction because a recombination of the reactants has occurred in the formation of the products. Even though most reactions in the cell are exchange reactions, we use the labels of synthesis or decomposition based on what happens to the larger molecules. ATP, or adenosine triphosphate, is a molecule that stores energy that can be used by the cell. The reaction releasing that energy is an exchange reaction, even though it looks like decomposition. The release of energy from ATP is controlled by an enzyme. A water molecule is used by the enzyme to break the bond in ATP. Elements of the water are found in both of the products, ADP 
and phosphate. The energy that is released is available for other cellular processes. Many reactions are reversible, which means that they can go in either direction. One major factor that determines the direction of the reaction is the concentration of the reactants and products. For any particular reversible reaction, the ratio of reactants and products will remain constant. The reactants and products will be at an equilibrium. If there is an increase in the concentration of the reactants, some of them will react to become the products. In this example, carbon dioxide and carbonic acid are in equilibrium. Additional carbonic acid molecules will upset the equilibrium. Some of the carbonic acid breaks down into water and carbon dioxide. This restores the balance between reactants and products. Chemical bonds are fundamental to the structure and function of many types of molecules, such as proteins, carbohydrates, lipids, nucleic acids, gases, salts, and water. These molecules are composed of atoms that are held together by three different types of bonds. Covalent bonds, ionic bonds, and hydrogen bonds. An atom consists of a nucleus surrounded by charged particles called electrons. The electrons exist in various layers surrounding the nucleus called orbitals. Atoms are most stable when their outermost orbital is filled. Usually, the outermost orbital contains eight electrons. If an atom's outermost orbital is not filled, electrons will move to fill this shell. The activity of electrons between adjacent atoms is the basis of chemical bonds. The regulation of the amount and composition of body fluids is fundamental to maintaining homeostasis. Fluids are solutions that primarily consist of water. Dissolved substances make up the rest of the fluid. These include nutrients. Gases. nitrogenous wastes, electrolytes, and proteins. Water plays several important roles in the body. They include transportation, participation in chemical reactions, lubrication, and temperature regulation. Since many chemicals are soluble in water, it acts as the primary medium for transportation within the body. Blood and lymph fluids carry water and dissolved solutes throughout the body. Cells need these transported substances to perform their functions. Water participates as a reactant in chemical reactions. In dehydration synthesis reactions, water is removed from reactants and replaced with a bond. Formation of glycogen is an example of this type of reaction. 
in hydrolysis reactions, water is used to break up larger molecules to smaller molecules. Chemical digestion of foods is one example of this type of reaction. All chemical reactions occur within water. Without water, cells would not be able to build new molecules or get energy from fuel molecules. Water can absorb and release large amounts of heat. When water vapor is lost from the body, as in sweating, heat is also lost. Water makes up most of the lubricating fluid between moving organs. Cavities that contain the heart, lungs, and abdominopelvic organs are lined with serous membranes. Tissues, such as serous membranes, move fluid between organs to reduce damage due to friction. Water is found in all parts of the body. Before it can carry out its functions, it must be moved. In order to move water, cells must move solutes first. An increase in solutes will cause an increase in a solution's osmotic pressure. A high osmotic pressure indicates relatively low amounts of water. Water will move toward the fluid with the highest osmotic pressure. The movement of fluid is crucial to the functions of many structures, including the capillaries. The nephron. and the digestive and respiratory mucous membranes. Dissolved substances are transported to and from cells in fluids. The nephron reclaims water and solutes from the urine and returns these substances to the blood. As it does this, blood composition and volume are altered. Mucus, consisting mainly of water, is used in the digestive system to digest food molecules. Water, with other nutrients, is absorbed back into the mucosa. The water in mucus, produced by the respiratory mucosa, has a role in cleaning air prior to gas exchange in the lungs.